audience, students and scholars here, I am Dr. Amjad Ali. In this video, we will discuss uh, this special case of purchasing for parity. Uh, dear scholars, a famous hypothesis in economics called the uh, law of one price states that the same good cannot sell for different prices in a different location at the same time. If a vessel of uh, wheat sold for less in New York than in Chicago, it would be profitable uh, to buy wheat in New York and then sell it in Chicago. This profit opportunity would become quickly apparent to uh, arbitrageous people who specialize in buying low uh, in one market and sell high in another. As the arbitrageous took advantage of this opportunity, uh, they would increase the demand for the wheat in New York and increase the supply of wheat in Chicago. Their action would drive the prices up in New York and down in Chicago, thereby uh, ensuring that prices are equalized in two markets. Okay, the law of one price applied to international marketplace is called purchasing power parity. It states that if international arbitrage is possible, uh, then a dollar must have the same purchasing power in every country. The argument goes as follows, uh, if a dollar could buy more wheat domestically than abroad, there would be opportunity to profit by buying wheat domestically and selling it abroad. Okay, profit seeking arbitrators would drive up the domestic price of wheat relative to, uh, to the foreign price. Similarly, if a dollar could buy more wheat abroad, then domestically the arbitrators would buy wheat abroad and sell it domestically, driving down the domestic price relative to uh, the foreign price. Okay, that's profit seeking by international arbitrators causes uh, wheat price to be same in all countries okay by talking about the specialized case of uh, 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 purchasing power parity uh, the doctrine of purchasing power parity uh, using the uh, using our model of real exchange rate uh, the quick action of these international arbitrators implies that net exports are highly sensitive to small movement in real exchange rate Okay, a small decrease in the price of domestic uh, goods relative to foreign goods that is a small decrease in real exchange rate causes arbitrators to buy goods domestically and sell them abroad. Okay, similarly, a small increase in the relative price of domestic goods causes arbitrators to import goods from abroad. Purchasing power parity has two important implications. First, because the uh, net export schedule is flat, change in uh, saving or investment do not influence the real or nominal exchange rate. Uh, second, because the real exchange rate is fixed, uh, all changes in the nominal exchange rate result from change in the price level. Okay, for the better understanding of uh, purchasing power parity, let's see a graphical presentation that how pur pur purchasing power parity reacts to net exports or real exchange rate. So here we have uh, our net exports on our x-axis and real exchange rate on y-axis. We have uh, saving and investment uh, vertical line and we have the net exports on uh, 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 horizontal and vertical shape here. Uh, so see here the law of one price applied to international marketplace suggests yes, that net exports are highly sensitive to small movement in the real exchange rate. This high sensitivity is reflected here, a very flat net export schedule here. Uh, the net export sch uh, schedule here very flat at the real exchange rate that equalize the purchasing power among country. Any small movement in real exchange rate uh, leads to a large change in uh, uh, net export. This extreme sensitivity of the net export guarantee that the equilibrium real exchange rate is always close to the level that ensure purchasing power parity. So here one of the main question arises that uh, is the doctrine of purchasing power parity are uh, realistic?
Most economists believe that despite its appealing logic, purchasing power parity does not provide a complete accurate description of the world. Uh, first, many goods are not easily traded. Uh, a haircut can be more expensive in, t uh, in Tokyo than in New York, yet there is no room for international arbitrage become it is possible, impossible to uh, transport haircuts. Uh, second, even tradable goods are not always uh, a perfect substitute uh, like some consumer prefer uh, Toyota and other prefer Force. Thus, the relative price of uh, uh, Toyota and Force can vary to some extent without leaving any profit opportunity. For these reasons, real exchange rate do uh, in fact vary over time. Okay, although the doctrine of purchasing power parity does not describe the world perfectly, it does provide a reason why movement in real exchange rate will be limited. Uh, there is much validity to this, uh, to its underlying logic. The farther the real exchange uh, rate drifts from the uh, level predicted by purchasing power parity, the greater the incentive for the individual to engage in international arbitrage uh, in goods. Uh, only uh, one cannot uh, uh, rely on purchasing power parity to, uh, to eliminate all changes in real exchange rate. But this doctrine does uh, provide a reason to expect that fluctuation in the real exchange rate will typically be small or temporary. So this is all about the special case of purchasing power parity under uh, some of the main uh, determinants of real exchange rate. Uh, so see you with another video. Ciao.